Well, not only is Jupiter the largest planet in our solar system, it's now also the planet with the most moons. In a shocking discovery, one of our neighboring planets, Saturn, is evolving right before our eyes. From its rings to its surrounding cosmic environment, scientists have spotted several signs that may spell doomsday for Saturn. Experts are even proposing that the planet will undergo drastic changes in the next couple of years, such that the next generation will not be able to recognize it anymore. What is happening to Saturn and why? What effects will these changes have on Saturn and our solar system as a whole? Join us as we explore why Saturn is not behaving how it should and how it has shocked scientists. Saturn is one of the most intriguing planets in our solar system for many reasons. Ever since it was first discovered, it has earned a top spot on the list of favorite planets to explore by astronomers. Although no astronauts have landed there like on Mars, we've amassed vast knowledge of the ringed planet. But inasmuch as we know so much, this planet will never cease to amaze us. From its temperature to its magnetosphere and its lunar system, there's always something significantly new to learn about Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from our Sun and the second largest planet in the solar system. The first astronomer to investigate Saturn was Galileo. He found the planet using his telescope in 1610. He saw the planet as having ears or arms by the side. This was actually the rings surrounding it. But due to the substandard apparatus available, Galileo couldn't see them for what they really were. Decades later, in 1659, a Dutch astronomer named Christian Huygens viewed Saturn with an improved telescope and discovered its ring system. Huygens also discovered Titan since it was the largest moon orbiting Saturn. Later, in 1675, an astronomer named Cassini discovered the gap that separated Saturn's ring system into two parts. This gap was named the Cassini Division. Subsequent discoveries followed over the next decades and centuries, each adding a new layer of knowledge about this unique planet. The first close-up images of this planet were taken by the Pioneer 2 spacecraft in 1979. It was a major milestone in the lifelong journey to unmasking the vast wonders of this giant spinning ball of a planet. However, it wasn't until the Cassini probe came along that real information came to light about this planet and its many, many wonders. Saturn has a thick atmosphere with a core that's about half of the planet's radius. This core weighs about 20 times the mass of the Earth. However, because Saturn is a gas planet consisting of about 94% hydrogen and 6% helium, the overall density of this planet is such that it would easily float if put into a large enough body of water. Astronomers have verified that the density of this planet is just 0.687 grams per cubic centimeter. This number makes it the least dense planet in our solar system. But that's not all. Saturn is also flatter when compared to other planets in the solar system. The gas giant flattens significantly at its poles. The planet measures 75,000 miles across its equator, but measures 68,000 miles across the poles. Comparing this to Earth's, which is 7,926 miles across the equator and 7,900 miles across the poles, we can see that Saturn is indeed flat compared to Earth and the other planets in our solar system. And just so you know, this little arrangement can alter the properties and behavior of this planet in more ways than you can imagine. The Cassini probe was designed to learn as much as possible about the weird behaviors and features of Saturn. This probe was named after the astronomer Cassini due to his numerous early contributions to our knowledge about Saturn. The probe was a robotic spacecraft created via a joint effort of NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency. The Cassini probe arrived on Saturn on July 1st, 2004. This probe was the fourth to visit Saturn. However, it was the first to enter deep into the planet's atmosphere. Previous probes were only able to do flybys. Also, the Cassini probe stayed for a total of 13 Earth years on the planet, gathering information. If the space probe hadn't run out of fuel, it would have continued its exploration of Saturn for another decade or so. However, in as much as the probe crashed, it wasn't a loss for the scientific community. Before its demise, the probe had transmitted a total of 453,000 images, as well as countless readings from its various instruments like spectrometers and magnetometers. Cassini's industriousness helped us to learn so much about Saturn's rings and atmosphere. 
It also transmitted details of Saturn's magnetic field to Earth. One of the most interesting data scientists obtained from Cassini was the details of Saturn's hexagon storm. The hexagon storm is a storm that's been identified on the gas giant for nearly a century. The storm creates a visible pattern on Saturn that can be clearly seen with telescopes and space probes. This pattern spans about 20,000 miles in diameter and takes the exact shape of a hexagon, hence its name. Although the hexagon pattern may look like a small patch of clouds to the naked eye, it's actually a raging storm. You see, at the center of this hexagon is a colossal hurricane that surpasses Earth's greatest hurricanes by 50% or more. In a weird cosmic phenomenon, the hurricane, along with other vortices in its surrounding region, swirl and harmonize to form a hexagonal jet stream. The composition of particles inside this hexagon was also discovered to be quite different from what's outside. Inside, there are more tiny haze particles than big ones, but on the outside, there are more large particles than tiny ones. Scientists discovered that the hexagon storm does not shift in location and travels with the rotation of the planet. The storm defies common sense, and scientists have long since taken it upon themselves to unravel the mysteries surrounding this hexagon storm. Recent studies have shown that the color of this storm is slowly changing from its well-known blue color to a golden color. There's no telling if this color change we're noticing in Saturn's hexagon storm is the first of its kind or if it's just a repeat of something that's happened before. You see, the weird hexagon storm has been around for decades. Some experts even feel it has been around for centuries. This is because our knowledge of this hexagon only began when astronomers were able to take a close-up look at the planet. What if the hexagon had been there all along, even when astronomers never knew of the planet Saturn? If this storm is as ancient as some scientists believe it to be, there may be a lot more to it than we'll ever know. Computer simulations have tried to explain the mystery of Saturn's hexagon. When heat is transferred through fluid or gas movement, atmospheric flows are generated. These flows, in turn, form large polar cyclones and jet patterns that move eastward. The combination of these two features in the upper atmosphere of a planet like Saturn makes for the distinctive hexagonal shape we see. Scientific models suggest that Saturn's hexagonal storm has lasted this long because it was formed deep within the planet. However, Scientists haven't found any other storm like this anywhere else in the universe, so there's still a huge puzzle surrounding Saturn's hexagon. How come it is the only planet with a hexagonal storm when it isn't the only gas giant in the cosmos? Saturn is referred to as a gas giant mainly because it's almost made entirely of hydrogen and helium. Almost is used here because most of the hydrogen in Saturn is compressed into liquid metal due to its pressure and temperature. You see, the deeper you travel into Saturn's atmosphere, the more heat and pressure you'll be subjected to. It's like the way you experience greater geothermal heat and pressure as you dig deeper into the Earth's crust. Some scientists theorize that the hydrogen on Saturn can be compressed so much that it becomes diamond and rains down into the planet's depths. The scholars also believe that the friction from this process is partially responsible for the unusual heat emitted from this planet. Saturn emits about twice the amount of heat it receives from the Sun, something no other planet in our solar system does. Aside from the crazy heat on this planet, another interesting thing about Saturn is its magnetic field. The magnetic field of any planet tells a lot more than the North and South Poles. It also tells information like the day and year cycles. This is because magnetic fields are a dynamo effect of a planet's rotation. As a planet spins, the liquid metal in its core also undergoes significant movements that create massive currents of energy. This energy is what produces the magnetic fields. And so, by observing how a magnetic field rotates around a planet, you could tell its day cycle. One rotation equals one day. However, Saturn doesn't play by this rule. In fact, Saturn's magnetic field is positioned on such an axis that it should be impossible for it to exist as long as it has. Its magnetic strength and orientation are about 580 times more powerful than Earth's, and yet scientists don't know just how this field is produced. Learning about how long it takes for Saturn to complete a one-day cycle took further extensive study beyond its magnetic fields. Scientists studied its radio waves and discovered that it emitted radio waves that rose and fell in intensity. And just as you'd guess, the rising and falling of these waves followed a unique timing. They noticed that higher levels of radiation appeared every 11 hours. This number tallied with the estimate scientists had deduced from Voyager 2's data. 
The Voyager probe had estimated Saturn's day cycle to be 10 hours and 40 minutes. And so, scientists decided to make it official, setting 11 hours as the length of time it takes for Jupiter to complete one day. Complete. But Cassini noticed that Saturn's speed of rotation wasn't constant. Over the course of its 13-year study, Cassini detected that the time it took Saturn to complete one day increased and decreased randomly. This was completely weird, and a major part of the scientific community didn't want to agree that the planet was exhibiting this weird behavior on its own. This group of experts opted to dig in further to find the underlying cause of these fluctuations. Scientists came up with the theory that something in Saturn's atmosphere was responsible for this. But were they right? Well, there's not enough data to tell whether these experts are right or wrong on this, but still, the deviations are quite minor in order of plus or minus 1%. This means that the 11-hour day assumption is mostly unchanged. In any case, a huge planet such as Saturn shouldn't be giving irrational readings. There's just too much going on with this planet that astronomers can't wrap their heads around. The Cassini probe revealed that the heat from this planet isn't ideal, plus its auroras are off too. Saturn has a lot of auroras, but unlike Earth's auroras, which are caused by solar flares, Saturn's auroras are present with or without solar winds. Saturn's auroras are formed as a result of some electrically charged particles that emanate from Saturn's rings and moons. This is quite unique, and scientists are even suggesting that these charged particles have a contributory role to play in the planet's immense temperature. Saturn's rings are the largest in the solar system. These seven rings were named according to their order of discovery. There's the B ring, the C ring, and then the D, E, F, and G rings. Just like the planet, Saturn's rings are very flat. The highest thickness Saturn's rings can boast of is 0.6 miles. Most regions are quite thin, some measuring as little as 32 feet. The particles in Saturn's rings vary in size and composition. Some are clear dust particles, while others are as large as rocks or huge boulders. Saturn's rings are quite young compared to the planet. Studies have shown that the rings may be only a few million years old, while the planet is over four billion years old. In addition, the rings seem to be slowly losing mass. The rocks and debris that make up the rings seem to be draining back down into the planet's atmosphere. Some experts predict that in another 100 million years, the rings will disappear completely. This is both shocking and unusual. As everything about Saturn just seems unusual, there are a lot more assumptions than certainties. The charged particles we talked about just now are also assumed to be the very thing that makes the radiation readings from Saturn fluctuate, as well as influence the creation of powerful charged winds. There's no proof of these, at least not for now. But even if this were true, there's still a mystery about how these charged particles form and why they are so influential to the entire planet. So what could be responsible for these powerful charged particles? Could this same factor or agent be responsible for all the other things that are off about Saturn? This is a huge puzzle scientists are still working round the clock to solve. But then, amidst all these chaotic events, something more shocking has been detected about Saturn that makes all the other abnormalities seem like a joke. Scientists have noticed mysterious spokes across Saturn's rings. It's important to note that these spokes weren't detected during the Cassini mission. And so, it becomes a disturbing discovery as to their purpose and why they're showing up now. Weirdly enough, scientists also discovered that the spokes appear dark when viewed from above, but appear bright when viewed from below. Further in-depth research revealed that the spokes emerge seasonally during Saturn's spring and fall. You see, just like Earth, there are four seasons on Saturn, but in Saturn's case, each season lasts for about seven Earth years. For now, the only theory scientists have come up with regarding these spokes is that they somehow originated from dust particles in the rings. Experts also believe that Saturn's magnetic field plays a part in this mysterious scenario. But there is still the question of what purpose these spokes serve. Many fear that they're just another indication that the planet is dying. But if so, why? And how long will it take? Also, what will become of Saturn's many moons if it faces an untimely demise? Saturn's moons are another object of attention. Saturn has many moons, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Recent scientific observations revealed about 62 new moons orbiting Saturn. This adds up the total number to 145 moons. But guess what? There are potentially more moons lurking in the cosmic space around this planet. It's still a wonder how and why this planet has so many moons when ours only has one. 
Interestingly, scientists believe that the rings surrounding Saturn were formed when its moons crashed into each other, shattering into thousands of pieces. This theory is very plausible, especially because Saturn didn't have any rings during its first few million years of existence. A version of this theory suggests that the rings were formed when an ice moon collided with Titan, Saturn's largest and most interesting moon. This hypothetical moon has been named Chrysalis. It's believed to have existed at a time when Saturn had no rings. Computer simulations revealed that Chrysalis was about the same size as Saturn's third largest moon, Iapetus. Around 100 to 200 million years ago, Titan and Chrysalis entered into resonance. But as Titan migrated outwards, Chrysalis's orbit became destabilized. So, as it slowly started to crash into Saturn, it got torn apart by the planet's gravity. The simulations showed that a huge chunk of chrysalis was absorbed in this process, while the remaining portion was transformed into a ring of dust and rocks. And so, it would seem that the almighty Titan is responsible for the rings we see around Saturn after all. This intriguing moon has always been a source of wonder, mostly because it is much like our Earth in many ways. For example, it has an atmosphere filled with nitrogen and has liquid lakes on its surface. A major part of the scientific community believes that there is potential bio-life on Titan, and this is the major thing inspiring them to explore this moon. However, amidst all this marvel in Saturn, signs of death are all over the planet. Now it's been confirmed that the rings are melting away at an extremely fast rate. Every 30 minutes, it loses volume up to about 2,500 cubic meters. This crashing of volume of rocks and debris is termed ring rain, Sometimes, this ring rain can contain particles weighing up to 2,800 kilograms in total, all crashing down to the planet's inner atmosphere. There's no telling how long before the ring is empty of cosmic material. It could take a million years, just a few decades, and even more, there's no telling the true extent of the damage these particles are causing on their way down. From atomic collisions to electromagnetic and heat energy transfer, there's quite a chain of reactions triggered by this ring rain. Interestingly, another type of rain occurs on Saturn, the moon rain. This rain occurs when Enceladus, one of Saturn's smallest moons, shoots out jets of ice water from its underground ocean. This water rains down into Saturn's atmosphere like rain falls from our clouds on Earth. This rain consists of water, organic compounds, and chemicals like propane and butane. Unfortunately, we don't know much about how Saturn's unique rains react down there in the deep parts of the planet. Do they form some weird liquid pool, or are they all sucked up into the liquid core of the gas giant? No one can say for now. Scientists haven't been able to send a probe deep into Saturn to gather data. It's all thanks to the Cassini's data that we have come this far in our knowledge of Saturn. But right now, it seems that the Cassini's data won't be enough to crack these puzzles. We may have to launch another mission to Saturn to verify our theories and add more concrete evidence to the existing theories. But how long would that take, and how much will it cost? With the already renowned space and scientific exploration projects like the Large Hadron Collider and NASA's Artemis program, there's little chance that the scientific community will turn its eyes to Saturn anytime soon. The next mission to Saturn is estimated to launch in 2027, if everything goes right. Still, this mission is said to be solely about exploring Titan, Saturn's largest moon, to see if truly there is biological life on it. If scientific suspicions are right and there are aliens on Titan, it would be a turning point in our space exploration journey. But until that day comes, we can't help but hold on to the little we know so far about the gas giant and the vast cosmic world surrounding it. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos.